Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, we're going to be going through uh, League Gen uh, Gener's plane number four. Um, now I've gone through all these plays before. The last time I did it, I was using a Type 14 sword that was basically a little bit shorter, more tapered. With that type of a sword, basically you can, you know, you can shoulder and arm a lot of your shots in. With this type of a sword, you require a lot of rotational cuts. You have to use your hips uh, because it's a, 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 a longer sword that's more blade heavy, okay? Um, so th this particular play, number four, I had in mind more than any other play uh, when I decided to go through all these plays uh, with this type of a sword. Um, and, and the nice thing is that you'll notice that this, this play utilizes a lot of Cuts, okay, a lot of cuts and a lot of misdirection. You know, we're striking different quadrants, you know, left, right, center, down. Um, you know, so, so so there's a lot of misdirection here. So so I think it's like, you know, if we didn't have any other plays to work with, if we just had this play number four, um, I mean, I think we could pr probably recreate sword and shield fighting just from this, you know, just playing with, around with different permutations of cuts. Okay, so let me get my sword, my shield, and... Um, Let's go through this play. Okay. So he tells us to open up with a middle how. Okay. So basically, we're dropping a middle how to the leg. Because basically, I'm not going to throw a middle how into the middle of the shield. I'm going to throw that middle how to the leg, uh, presumably with a step. Okay. Uh, and, and this, the step I'm adding, you know, to to this type of a shield. Because basically, if I throw, if I stand in front of the shield and I throw that middle how, uh, basically, it's going to hit that the corner of that shield. If I try to go low, basically I'm out of range, but by taking a step here, you know, basically I'm riding that edge in, all of a sudden basically I'm in range, I can actually threaten. Um, that's going to force him to move, and, and, and that is, you know, part of what this misdirection is, is all about. I want to throw cuts that are going to get that shield to start moving around uh, and create an opening for me, okay? Uh, so basically I'm, I'm basically I'm here, I'm throwing that, that middle half to the leg. From there, he tells us to throw a Zwerchow. I'm going to throw a left side Zwerchow because that's the easiest place to go. Then he says go right side Zwerchow, okay, over here. Um, you know, and then basically he tells us to throw a Shadowhow, which is going to go down the center. To throw the Shadowhow with this type of a sword, I pretty much have to pull back and make that downward cut, okay. Uh, presumably he's gonna block that and then from there I'm gonna step in and make that thrust okay the reason why I'm stepping over a little bit to the side is because you can see when I have that corner up you know that corner is basically blocking my leg that's blocking my head this is blowing out a little bit so what's happening is uh, I'm able to make that 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 shadow how to the head but from there if I just pull back and thrust I'm just gonna hit shield so after I make that shadow how, I'm going to step to the left a little bit and thrust inside that that get you know basically along that curve on this on this shield. And all these cuts, I would basically vary them vary them to the shape of the shield uh, and to the type of guard that my opponent is uh, is holding. The type of guard that he's holding here, where basically he's in a guard like this, uh, the. Um, you know, this combination works really good because first I'm throwing that that middle how which is going to basically get them maybe to drop that shield a little bit as I step around it might you know because remember if I step around right right because here it's blocked here I have the angle they're going to see it coming because this is the very first blow so what does that mean if I'm throwing a, if I'm stepping around and throwing a cut there you know what are they going to do they're going to move the corner a little bit that way right that makes all the sense in the world so I've gotten them to move the shield that shield corner a little bit that way so once that's done by them moving that way basically hopefully they've opened up a defense they've opened up their defense a little bit on the other side I'm gonna pull through come back this side they're probably gonna sword block that then from there come back to this side they might catch that with that corner over there pull through and I come back around and throw that sh that that shadow how right down the center, okay? And then from there, if that hasn't done the job, I pull back, step a little bit to the side, and throw that thrust into the groin. Uh, he specifically tells us to throw it to the groin. Now, I've always kind of assumed when I'm going through this play that the shadow how actually lands, okay? 
that shadow how lens, okay, and basically pulling through and thrusting into the groin, um, you know, is, is basically just so that he can look stupid at his funeral, okay. Um, but, but I believe that that, you know, that this play calls for that shadow hop land because uh, especially if we're fighting somebody in the, in male, the male is going to pretty much come down to their legs over here. So if, if, you, if you thrust them into the groin, um, you know, it, I mean, it's going to hurt. And I've been, I've been hit, I've been hit in the cup plenty of times to know that even with armor, getting hit in the nuts hurts. Okay. You're going to feel that. So here's the thing. If, no, if he was able to block all of those shots, right? If he blocks all of those shots, and then at the end I do the shadow how, which I think he blocks, he brings that corner in a little bit, and I pull through and I thrust them uh, into the groin. Okay, if he's wearing mail, I'm not gonna kill him, but I've just I've just struck a major psychological blow against my opponent because now the fight is going to continue. Um, and using those same cuts, I can basically just continue the, the fight. So this time, instead of starting off with the middle how, I can I can change it up so that perhaps I'm starting off with the shadow how, okay, and then from there, going to that middle how, and then and from there I can switch out zip left, switch out right, and then perhaps then go back to that groin. So you, you know, think of all these cuts as all as possible permutations. You know, you can you can take all these plays, take all the different cuts. Throw them in the bag and then like kind of like randomly pull out three cuts, three maybe four four cuts tops, um, but but basically three or four cuts uh, that you're going to execute. Okay, so that, that's how you can think of these plays. They're they're a bunch of cuts and that you can kind of take them apart and put them together in different uh, different permutations. Um, in a real fight, basically every time you go through, uh, you know, every time you you go through a series of, of passes, you're gonna change that up. Now the um, you know, let, let's talk about the tempo of, of sword and shield fighting um, versus let's say uh, the long sword, right? When we talk about long sword, okay, when we look at literature now, basically what we see is that the fight usually ends in you know within one or two strokes. Okay, so what happens is you're here, you, know, you strike that, make that strike with one of a wrap, thrust through, and if he blocks that, you come around to the other side. And, and, and you kill him with these with, with his rush up. So it's so within one or two strikes with the long sword, we expect that the fight will end. Okay. Um, part of the reason is because as we strike, let's say let's say I strike a a a, a, a Zornhau, and then from there I go to a um, you know I go to a uh, a, a, a right? All right. So so I turn my Zornhau okay into a Zornhau. Okay. So what, what's happened there is that, um, you know, basically I'm already in measure. I'm deep in measure, right? I'm way over here. So from here, um, you know, things are going to get ugly really fast. I mean, this fight is going to end one way or another. So I basically, I'm, 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 I'm on top of the guy at that point. Um, I cannot, you know, once you make contact with a two-handed sword, you know, you know, and you're in measure, you're not in the position where you can safely come out okay um because you know, you, you know usually the fight's going to end now with the sword and shield um it tends to follow a different tempo because i have the defense of the shield i can move into and out of measure uh, relatively safely so basically i i can come in you know i can throw that middle how throw my left side works right side works pull through um you know throw my shadow how Throw my groin thrust, and then I can come out because I have I have defense here. I have this defense, so so basically I can now come in and I can try a different combination. You know, possibly I can open up with a thrust, turn that into a into a sword shout. You know, and then from there I can maybe take a a left side middle how to the leg. Um, so so sword and shield fighting uh, tends to get a little bit more drawn out. Um, and, and we're playing with, with, with much more different common, or lots of different permutations of possible strikes. So there's a couple of things for you guys to think of. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a member, subscribe. Talk to you guys next time.